there we go. Hey everybody, Jim here. Welcome back for some more games. Uh, because you better believe I got some more games, as per usual. Uh, so today we're going to chill out, we're going to sip some coffee, and we are going to talk about half a dozen Switch games that I picked up recently. Uh, should be a pretty good time for everyone involved, because as you know, uh, when you're talking about Switch games, well now it's a party. Uh, because, uh, I've said this before, but uh, right now most of the games I'm playing are on the Switch. Um, you know, I like the first party Nintendo stuff and some of the RPGs they got on there. Um, but I've been really getting my fix as far as shoot 'em ups and beat 'em ups, um, arcade style stuff. I've really been getting my fix uh, from the Switch. So uh, these days, not so much a retro game collector anymore. More of a kind of just a, a Switch gamer with a modest retro gaming collection. But uh, this is going to be fun. Kind of a gloomy day out there today so you know we've had quite a few of those lately so i said you know what what uh what better to do on a gloomy day than sit inside on my couch drink coffee and then talk to my camera that's the best thing to do on a gloomy day when we uh when we're confronted with a gloomy day around here we turn it into a groovy day that's what uh, this channel is all about turn your gloomy day into a groovy day by drinking coffee and playing video games so there you go Oh, nice and hot, nice and fresh. Made all that much better by the bubble bubble mug. All right, let's get into it. Uh, half a dozen uh, Switch games here. Really great stuff. Um, actually, these first three games, um, I've never done, I haven't had these in like a pickups video or anything, but I have talked about these games in reviews in the past. And uh, since nobody uh, seems to want to watch my reviews, sad face, um, more people actually watch my pickups videos than my reviews, so I figure um, a better way maybe to get the word out about some of these games is to feature them in a pickups video as opposed to a review. So that's what we're going to do uh, with this first game right off the top. I want to say like last month or maybe two months ago I put up a review for this game. Um, didn't get a lot of views, but uh, I think the people that actually watched it uh, enjoyed learning about this game because it's been really under the radar. Haven't seen a whole lot of coverage on it, uh, even on like channels that cover quite a lot of Switch games. Um, this is Ilvelo Swamp and Rattergy Swag in a single little collection. Uh, this by uh, RS34. Um, so Rattergy Swag, uh, sequel to the original Rattergy, which was released on the Dreamcast, which is uh, you know it's a really fun game. Um, a good shooter and really stood out for the uh, kind of like the cell shaded graphic style. It was very colorful. Uh, the characters were kind of uh, quirky, I guess you could say. And there was another Rattergy game. I think it was like Rattergy Naomi or something like that. Maybe it was made on Naomi hardware. I think it was actually released on the GameCube, but don't quote me. But this, Rattergy Swag, um, very cool because it's pretty much a never ending shoot 'em up. Um, you, I mean, there are a ton of, like, point bonuses to get and, um, uh, life, uh, recharging stuff, but your main power-up you want to get in this game are these speed boosts. They increase the speed of your ship, and, uh, like, the faster you go, the faster the enemies, uh, come into the screen. Um, there's way more possibility for, like, point bonuses and high scores when you're going fast, but also, um, in addition to your score and the amount of time you play in a, a single sitting, um, the game also records the distance you travel. So there are actually three different kind of like high scores you can go for. You can go for a legitimate uh, high score on points, or you can go for the longest amount of distance you can possibly go, or the longest amount of time you can possibly go. So your play style, your strategy will change depending on uh, what kind of high score you want to get. And uh, the last I checked, like the, the high score for time played was like well over an hour. Someone uh, a single uh, game here played for over an hour, uh, which is definitely a pretty tall order because um, the faster you go in this game, again, the more challenging it gets, lots of stuff, lots of enemies start coming on screen. You have to use your, um, you have a, a shield uh, ability, similar to like maybe like a Giga Wing or something like that. It makes you temporarily invulnerable 
and it gives you like point bonuses and can do damage to um, uh, bosses or well not bosses there are no bosses in this game but enemies especially some of the larger enemies it's very useful and when you're going at super high speeds it fills up like almost like instantly so you're going like really fast you're using your your shield thing like constantly and at that point like slowing down is actually kind of like detrimental to you because it takes longer to um, fill up your shield meter and those enemies just keep on coming so Radergy Swag super fun game and uh, the other game included in here Il Velo Swamp uh, very weird very weird shoot 'em up um, so this game it has like a hundred stages in it I think but uh, initially you won't be able to access very many of them um, each stage has little challenges that you have to complete to collect keys and by collecting the keys you unlock more stages and it's kind of you can um, you unlock branching paths through the game so you can go from like stage one to like stage five to stage 20 something um, it goes all over the place uh, the gameplay itself is is pretty wild it's definitely not your typical shooter you have a basic shot which is kind of ineffective really and then you have these two sort of like little remotes um, they're sort of like spinning discs or whatever they're called dolls but uh, you can uh, launch them out from your ship and then move them all around the screen and you have lots of special abilities uh, with your dolls and basically you're gonna need you to use those and use their weird abilities and things to kill certain enemies to complete challenges to get keys to unlock new levels um, so it's if you're like a big, you know, if you're looking for something like the next Dodon Pachi or something like that, this is not going to be the collection for you. These games are, again, like I said, kind of quirky. They're very unusual for shoot 'em ups. Um, it, Ovello Swamp is unusual in its gameplay, and then Ranergy Swag is more unusual just in that it it doesn't have a, um, a setup like you play through various stages and there's a boss and things like that. It totally. Uh, disregards that kind of um, you know gameplay style and just goes for one long continuous game um, that you just uh, hang in there as long as you can but I really enjoyed these games I gave them um, uh, high praise when I did the reviews I'll actually link the reviews in the uh, description if you want to go watch those um, but yeah pretty damn cool I had a lot of fun with uh, both of these games Ovello Swamp and Rattergy Swag good stuff uh, again, yeah, go check out the reviews if you uh, if you are so inclined, and consider picking up uh, this collection of games because it's really cool. Uh, next up, another shoot 'em up. If I said that that is not the game to play, if you're like a Dodon Pachi fan or something, K fan, uh, this is one of those games you're going to want to play if you are a fan of those types of shooters because this is a cave shooter. It is Esp Raid Psy. And uh, this is awesome because it comes with the original arcade mode. It comes also with what it calls the arcade plus mode and the super easy mode. And I think they even break it down to where you can just play like Esp Raid or I think maybe Psy is the arcade plus mode. Anyway, um, really great game. Top down shooter made by Cave. So you pretty much, you know what you're gonna get. Uh, it's a bullet hell shooter. You have at least four selectable characters to play, uh, play with. They're all like psychic characters and they all have like uh, different abilities. I think my favorite, well there's guy, he's like a pyromancer, so he uses fire. Another dude just sort of uses like green energy and stuff. Um, but you know, they're all pretty cool. They all have different shot types and stuff. It's essentially like choosing the different ships in a Dodon Pachi game. And you have your, your rapid shot, you have your concentrated powerful shot. Instead of a super bomb, you have a powerful like side meter, like an ESP meter that fills up as you um, uh, you know destroy enemies and then you can use uh, a powerful psychic attack which gives you a shield around your character that makes you invulnerable and you can convert things into point bonuses with that and then you can also fire off this big powerful ESP blast so that's cool um, so you can use that up fill it back up by destroying enemies and just maybe want keep some energy in there um, for when you really need it because sometimes just that little tiny chunk of energy is what's going to save you um, and at the same time as you're destroying enemies you can collect um, lots of little power-ups that increase uh, your attack power as well so there's not like an individual like you get this and your attack power is uh, suddenly like through the roof you have to pick up these like little smaller uh, power-up things uh, but really fun game very uh, challenging as cave shooters tend to be although like I said there is a super easy mode so if you're not exactly like a champion at bullet hell shooters 
um, but you do enjoy playing them. I'm kind of like that. I'm not really great at uh, bullet hell shooters, um, but I really, really enjoy them just for like the fun pick up and play challenging gameplay. Um, so if you want to play a bullet house shooter, want to get into some, but you're really intimidated by the difficulty, it's nice that they include a super easy mode to kind of get you into it. Um, but like I said, you've got all your different characters to choose from, a bunch of different stages, lots of enemies, big boss battles, bullet hell action, tons of fun. Really nice graphics, really great soundtrack as well. Uh, nothing to complain about with this one. Again, if you like, e uh, not ESP, if you like uh, Cave, if you like cave games, if you like stuff like Dodon Pachi or Death Smiles, Akai Katana, Mushihime Sama, all that great stuff, you're going to love this game too because it's similar to those games but definitely has a personality and a style all its own. And it is great. And it is. Esp. Raid. Sai. Had a lot of fun with that one. Had a lot of fun with this one too. This is another shoot 'em up. Uh, surprise, surprise. I said I've been playing a lot of shoot 'em ups on the Switch. Uh, another shoot 'em up actually um, had this game, sold it, and then picked it up again recently. Actually, picked up like a special edition. Um, this one uh, by Success, the same developer as the Cotton Games. Um, this really good one, you might already know what it is. It is Saivariar Delta. And Saivariar, this is a series that. I think the first time I played Saivaria was on the PS2 actually, and I really enjoyed it immediately. If you've never played a Saivaria game, uh, essentially what it is, is you've got your spaceship and you kind of want to, uh, I don't know, dance on the razor's edge so to speak, because by skimming bullets, basically by letting bullets graze the side of your ship, you get uh, lots of bonus points. Um, but you can also use this as a way to like power up your ship as well, so you have Again, it's kind of like a Dodon Patsy where you have a rapid fire and a powerful shot. When you do your powerful shot, your ship will actually like spin around like really rapidly. And while you're doing this, uh, you, you kind of have like a smaller hitbox, I would say, because it at least feels that way for me. But this is a good time to, again, skim those bullets. So this game encourages you to play kind of risky to uh, it has the buzz system they call it buzzing bullets um, most games you want to stay as far away from bullets as possible not so with the Savaria games so the more bullets that you just narrowly dodge and let them skim the side of your ship the better so uh, honestly if you want big point bonuses and you want to power up your ship it's actually better for you to let the screen fill up with bullets and to put yourself in danger, get into those danger zones, because um, that's the best, quickest way to get high scores and to power up your ship in this game. Um, aside from that, aside from just kind of like that cool gimmick, I guess you could say, the mechanic of the buzzing thing, this is really just a straight up awesome bullet hell shooter, nice graphics, great soundtrack, super fun and a challenging game as well. You have a couple of ships to choose from, and uh, honestly, in this one, I didn't notice like a huge difference between the two ships, maybe like in their handling or whatever, but it's not a huge difference. Either, either ship you pick, you're going to um, be playing basically the same style of gameplay. Um, but yeah, very fun. Again, this is one that um, I think aside from channels that really focus in on shoot 'em up specifically, not a whole lot of coverage was done for this game. I'm not even sure this got a release outside of Japan now that I think about it. This might be a Japan exclusive game. I don't know, don't quote me on that. But yeah, I did not see a whole lot of love for Saivari or Delta, um, which I thought was regrettable because this game is great. Uh, the Saivari or games in general are all really good. Um, so if you've never tried this series before and you're a shooter fan, this would be a perfect way to get introduced to Savarier. This is a, a great game, a lot of fun again. Nice graphics, nice sound design, fantastic, challenging gameplay with a cool gimmick that sets it apart from the other shoot 'em ups on the console. It is Savarier Delta. And it's a whole lot of fun. All right, three games down, three games to go. And I need some coffee to, uh, you know, give me that energy I need to continue on with the pickups video. So uh, sit back, relax, watch whatever the hell I'm going to put here, and we'll be right back. This is like the little halftime show for my pickups videos. Uh, kind of fun, I guess. A little gimmick. 
It lets me sip coffee and gather my thoughts for the next few games, so that's fun. Anyway, why am I rambling? I don't need to tell you the behind the scenes stuff. You already know all this. Check this out, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, and we're back. What did I put there? I don't know. I said that before. I never know what I'm going to put there. It's just when I'm sitting there and I'm editing whatever works its way into my brain. I end up putting there. Anyway, we've got three more games. They're all awesome. Uh, the, I mean, I say that about pretty much every game I talk about on this show, but... Um, Man, have I been having fun with these games. First up, uh, this one, um, and I mean, I got it, and it, I just, oh, it came with all this stuff. First off, it came with a manual, and that's cool, and it came with a, a little, like, poster, and it came with stickers, it came with everything. The game's not in here now, because it's in my Switch, because I've been playing a lot of this, but I mean, it's the Ninja Saviors. Oh my god, the Ninja Saviors. Return of the Warriors. Um, I have been just really enjoying this game immensely like I've played the previous uh, Ninja Warriors games I played the original Ninja Warriors on the PC Engine and I played the um, the arcade version as well not a great game <laughs> it's it, it's really not like it, it, it's mindless enough it, it's fun enough to play for like you know 10 minutes or so I can see why it was you know, it's an arcade game you sit down you put a coin in you play for like 10 minutes you die and then you move on Ninja Warriors again, though, on the uh, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, much better, made for a console experience. I think it's much better for it, but the Ninja Saviors blows those games out of the way. This game is uh, it's awesome. It's so fun. It's done in the retro style, so, it, I mean, if you've played, like, Ninja Warriors again, you know what this, you know, you're going to feel right at home here is what I'm saying. It sticks to the, the strictly side-scrolling 2D beat-em-up style. Um, which I like. It, it's not done very often, but what is when it is done, I typically like the game. One of my favorite beat 'em ups ever is X Men Mutant Apocalypse, which is kind of a it, it's a beat 'em up, but there's like a little bit of platforming thrown in. But it's purely side scrolling, and I love it. And I love this game too. The only thing I, I wish um, that all the characters would have like a dash ability or something like that. It just feels like maybe when you're, uh, you move a little slowly at times, and it wasn't until I started to, I guess, get more uh, familiar with the movesets of the characters, especially the, um, the Kunoichi, the uh, female character, which none of these, they're all robots, I guess, um, but uh, she has kind of like a, a flip, like a forward flip slashing, uh, you know, special attack that I started doing constantly because, one, it's a good attack you know you smack enemies from the air especially those little guys you can kill in one hit you can take a couple of them at a out at a time if you're accurate but also it just helps her move quicker um so that would be my only complaint is that it is kind of annoying that they didn't include a dash ability for all the characters even though the big the big uh, ninja guy he kind of has a dash because he's got his little jetpack ability and he can sort of slide across the screen a little bit but a proper dash like in you know in tmnt or something that would have been appreciated um, but other than that, fantastic game, uh, great gameplay, it's fun, it is a challenging game, there's a normal mode and a hard mode, and even on the normal mode, especially some of the bosses are kind of tricky, it might take you a couple of tries to figure out like their patterns and stuff and get past some of the bosses, um, but it's very fun, challenging, fantastic visuals, again this is another game um, very much like, again like uh, a TMNT or something like that, it's, it, does justice to sort of that like retro style because there, sometimes games they try to do that retro visual style and it, it's a budgetary thing and it doesn't really look that good and um, luckily you know this is not a game like that you play it and it has a style where you can see they're kind of homaging old school arcade and like maybe 16-bit style games but they put in like enough detail and color and stuff it, to give it like a nice big boost. Basically the visuals are like a much better looking version of like maybe a 16-bit game I guess um, or maybe possibly even like an early 32-bit game. It's in that style and I like it a lot. 
the character designs are great, the stage designs are great, everything's very detailed, um, you know, nice, colorful, great stuff. Um, and the soundtrack is really good as well. So who the hell, because I know it's like I-N-I-N, or N-N Games, because this is still like a Taito property, I guess, and it says also Natsume Atari, or Natsume Atari. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic game. Great visuals, great soundtrack, really fun gameplay, challenging gameplay. It's it's excellent. I, I um, This is, I'm going to do a video in the future of like the best beat-em-ups on the Switch. Um, this will definitely definitely be included. Maybe some people wouldn't agree because, you know, they don't like the strictly side-scrolling style. They prefer, they want, you know, Streets of Rage 4 or they want uh, Ninja Turtles or River City Girls or something. All great games too, um, but I would definitely put this like in my top five beat-em-ups on the console right now. Uh, just because I've been having so much fun with it. And it's one of those games where after you complete stages, you can then do like a uh, time attack for each stage. So it's a game that if I've only got like 30 minutes to kill, I can put this in, play a stage or two in the time attack, and uh, you know, be satisfied. So yeah, I think um, I'm going to do a review on this in the future, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, end this little bit here. But I'll just say right now, I, I highly recommend this game if you're a retro game enthusiast. It's a lot of fun. The Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors. Great game. Speaking of uh, sort of like retro uh, sequels, same uh, developers actually. This is Natsumi Atari, and I don't know if this is uh, in in as well, but licensed by Taito. Uh, so another game by Natsume Atari. Um, you may or may not already know what it is. Um, Kiki Kai Kai here, I believe. English though. Uh, this is Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. Another game, a uh, sequel to classic um, the Pocky and Rocky series or the Kiki Kai Kai series. I've played Kiki Kai Kai on the PC Engine and on the Super Famicom and in the arcade. Uh, they're very fun games, a little top down, kind of like little run and gun games, but with a very Japanese um aesthetic and style you have your uh, little shrine maiden girl and a tanuki uh who can uh, run around and you know pelt things with the uh, leaves and shit whatever the hell he throws at people um but I, I love this game it's great it's another one of those like fantastic where they did the graphics in a style that is very akin to a retro game akin to something 16-bit but the, the amount of like just detail and color and animation put into it um, lets you see that it's, it's a step above that. So they homage the classic games, but they give you something new and improved. And I like that a lot. So this game, a lot of fun, top-down, run-and-gun type game. I will say also, just like Ninja, uh, Ninja Saviors, uh, this can be a pretty damn tough game. Uh, when I first started playing, Again, this is one where you're going to want to like learn enemy patterns and boss patterns and stuff like that. Because when I first started playing this game, I was kind of getting my ass handed to me in the first stage. So I had to really kind of like familiarize myself a little more with kind of like the, what, what maybe the best weapons are for each kind of like um, area, each stage, each boss. Because you can get a lot of different power-ups and you can have... Um, I, I ended up sticking mostly with like the, the, the spread shot where she throws her little talisman cards. Um, but uh, lots of various power-ups. Some are more powerful, they're better for bosses and stuff, but when you're playing a stage and there's lots of enemies, I like to have something with a nice spread. And then what's also cool, it's a two-player game, so you can play as Pocky and Rocky, but when I was playing through the single-player mode, I, it was cool that you could swap uh, between the two characters. So some stages will have you playing as Pocky, some stages playing as Rocky. Um, so that's very cool. So you get, even if you're playing single player, you get the pleasure of playing as both characters because they do have like different power-ups and things like that. And um, so that's cool. But just overall, um, a fun game, but uh, very challenging. So, you know, keep that in mind going in. Uh, they homage those, those older games and they keep the difficulty that some of those games had. So that's great. So really fun gameplay, challenging. Uh, one or two players, it's great either way. Uh, various gameplay modes included, some you can unlock actually. And uh, really great graphics and excellent sound design. Um, I don't know what else to say. Again, this is another game I'll probably do like a full review of in the future because this is my type of game. Sort of retro inspired action games, shooters, beat em ups, fighting games, arcade style stuff. That's all in my wheelhouse. So 
I knew I was going to love this game when I picked it up. And uh, I was absolutely right. I love it, even though it kicked my ass in the early goings. But it's a fantastic game. And one that if you haven't played it yet, uh, I highly recommend you do. Because it's a lot of fun. It is uh, Pocky and Rocky, Reshrined, a.k.a. Kiki Kai Kai. All kinds of love for that. And finally, a game I picked up recently. Uh, very recently. This, a collection of games that uh, I had uh, years ago on the Xbox 360 and loved them then and when I found out that they were uh, bundling them together and releasing them on the Switch uh, I was uh, el elated, so excited, I had to have this day one uh, this is the Bullet Soul Collection or as it says, Bullet Soul Double Soul Pack is what it's called, so Bullet Soul um, yeah, awesome games, I believe uh, so this, uh, published by Mages, uh, what is this, Division, Division 2, um, whatever, I forget who it was, 5PB? I think 5PB originally, uh, released these games on the Xbox 360. Anyway, loved these games on the 360. Top-down shoot 'em ups and there's the original Bullet Soul, which, when you're playing Bullet Soul, uh, as you destroy enemies, any bullets they have on screen... Uh, become harmless. So even if the bull, uh, the screen is filling up with bullets, if you destroy the enemy that released the bullets to begin with, the bullets will like turn clear and they won't be allowed to harm you. So even if you touch them, they're fine. And it, when I first played the game, I thought you were getting point bonuses by collecting those, those deactivated bullets. You don't. You just get point bonuses by blowing up lots and lots of stuff as quickly as possible. Uh, so the original um, Bullet Soul is included on here with uh, various um, uh, gameplay modes. So there's like a caravan mode, I think a Muso mode. You can play individual stages, high scores, things like that. And there's Bullet Soul Infinite Burst, which Infinite Burst is, um, it's ridiculously fun. Uh, basically Infinite Burst, same kind of concept. If, a, if an enemy has bullets on screen and you destroy the enemies, the bullets are deactivated, but they just disappear outright in this game. Uh, but all the enemies you destroy release coins and by collecting all those coins You get point bonuses obviously and then as you're destroying enemies You're filling up a power meter and then when your power meter is full you can activate it You go into the super powered up mode and then all the coins are red and they're worth more points And the more coins you collect the longer you stay in your super powered mode So the whole game is just a constant barrage of blowing up enemies collecting coins, going all over the screen, dodging bullets, collecting more coins. It's like they mixed a bullet hell shooter with a slot machine. It's like sensory overload when you're playing this game because the graphics are great, colorful, flashy, um, and the soundtrack is really high energy. And what's great is this on this uh, game, you can actually choose between three different versions of the soundtrack. There's the original soundtrack, there's the arranged mode that was uh, originally created for Bullet Soul Infinite Burst on the Xbox 360. And it's an arranged, like, heavy metal version of the soundtrack, which is my personal favorite. Um, it's great. And then there's a, a third updated version of the original soundtrack made specifically for this release. So, um, But all the music is great. But I, I turn on that heavy metal version of the soundtrack, and then I'm just, like, blasting everything to hell and back, collecting tons of coins, explosions everywhere, bullets... And just enemies, it's just, again, sensory overload. There's so much going on in this game at any one given time. It's so colorful, it's so flashy. Brilliant looking game. Um, so, love the visuals. Love the gameplay, super addictive. Again, also on Infinite Burst, there are a bunch of different gameplay modes. So there's, I believe, a Musou mode, where when you're playing it, like you're always super powered up. And there's another Caravan mode, where you try to rack up as many points in a limited amount of time. Um, so there's both games, both including lots of gameplay modes for each one. The gameplay itself is really fun and addictive um, and challenging as well. It's not, the, uh, it's not the easiest shooter in the world. I wouldn't say it's the most difficult either. I wouldn't put it on par with like maybe some of Cave's more difficult offerings or maybe some of the more difficult stuff by um, like Treasure or something like that. But still, fairly challenging game. But uh, for the most part, you're just going to want to like rack up the highest possible scores you can get up to like, I don't know, a trillion points or something. Not kidding, by the way. You can get trillions of points in this game. Uh, it's insane. So super fun gameplay. Lots of gameplay modes. 
great graphics and an awesome soundtrack. Um, this game just has it all. And this is another one that I'm going to be doing a full review of in the future to, you know, get a little more in detail. But I'll just say here, if you're a shoot 'em up fan, I highly recommend this game. It was just released in October and I have been having so much fun with it. It is awesome. It is Bullet Soul, the Double Soul Pack. Fantastic. Can't get enough of it. Can't get enough of those shoot 'em ups. Sugar Bear can't get enough of his Golden Crisp. For me, it's shoot 'em ups. I can't get enough of them. Uh, so got the the Bullet Soul there. Had so much fun with that. Got the Ratterji. Got the Savarier. Got the Esperade Psy. I've got other bunch of other shoot 'em ups here. I've been reviewing a bunch of them recently. The Cotton Games and uh, Rolling Gunner. Oh my goodness, I had so much fun with Rolling Gunner. Um, so yeah, if you got a Switch and you like shoot 'em ups. You're, you're sitting pretty, because they have a whole lot. Anyway, uh, that's it for this edition of More Games. Uh, hope you enjoyed uh, sitting here listening to me prattle on, just ramble and ramble and ramble about games. Uh, let me know if you're a Switch owner, what are some games you've been playing on your Switch recently. And if you've played any of these games, uh, let me know what you thought of them in the comments. I'd really like to know. And until next time, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.